For the past year and a half, my team at Push Pop Press and Charlie Melcher's at Melcher Media have been working on creating the first feature-length interactive book. It's called Our Choice, and the author is Al Gore. It's the sequel to An Inconvenient Truth, and it explores all the solutions that will solve the climate crisis. The book starts like this. This is the cover. As the globe spins, we can see our location, and we can open the book. And swipe through the chapters to browse the book, or we can scroll through the pages at the bottom. And if we want to zoom into a page, we can just open it up. And anything you see in the book, you can pick up with two fingers and lift off the page, and open up. And if you want to go back and read the book again, you just fold it back up and put it back on the page. And so this works the same way. You pick it up and pop it open. I consider myself among the majority. We look at windmills and feel they're a beautiful addition to the landscape. And so throughout the whole book, Al Gore will walk you through and explain the photos. This photo you can even see on an interactive map. Zoom into it and see where it was taken. And throughout the book, there's over an hour of documentary footage. And interactive animations, so you can open this one. Most with, modern wind turbines consist of a large. It starts playing immediately, and while it's playing, we can pinch and peek back at the page, and the movie keeps playing. Or we can zoom out to the table of contents, and the video keeps playing. But one of the coolest things in this book are the interactive infographics. This one shows the wind potential all around the United States, but instead of just showing us the information, we can take our finger and explore and see state by state exactly how much wind potential there is.、And、we can do the same for geothermal energy and solar power. This is one of my favorites. So this shows. When the wind is blowing, any excess energy coming from the windmill is diverted into the battery, and as the wind starts dying down, any excess energy will be diverted back into the house. The lights never go out. And this whole book, it doesn't just run on the iPad; it also runs on the iPhone. And so you can start reading on your iPad in your living room, and then pick up where you left off on the iPhone. It works the exact same way. You can. Pinch into any page, open it up. So that's、uh, Push Pop Press's first title. Al Gore is our choice. Thank you. Another question. So I, that's spectacular. I, do you want to be a publisher, a, a technology licensor? What is the business here? Is this something that other people can do? Yeah, we're building a tool that makes it really easy for publishers right now to build this content. So、um, Melcher Media's team, who's on the East Coast and we're on the West Coast, building the software, takes our tool and every day drags in images and text. And, so, uh, so you want you want to license this software to to publishers to make books as beautiful as that? Yes. All right, Mike. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good luck. If you did an internet search in the Greater Detroit area, you'd see bad news. Companies were closing. That houses were being foreclosed upon. However, when there are negative things going on, there's also opportunity. And for people that look for it, like Dave, they see the opportunity and they say, "I can make a difference here." There's a constant stream of, of negative news about you know economics and whatever. 
And so it's nice to inject some positive news coming out of Ypsilanti. It's motivation to, to make you want to do something to help out your town. So my friend Corinne, who uh, is the manager at the Ypsilanti Food Co-op, sent me what she thought was a grant for a solar project. Turned out it was a very low interest loan. So it kind of sparked my interest, and then I did some searching and was able to actually find a small $6,000 grant from the state of Michigan. But I've never done solar. I didn't know square one about how it was done. We bought panels, we figured out how to do it, and that was our first system. We needed to monitor the power and be able to track how much is coming in and out. I did find products that would do this for us, but those products could cost thousands of dollars. Yeah, we didn't have a thousand dollars. We invented a way to read utility meters for essentially free. My goal is to see a cloud. And I wanted to see a nice, smooth solar graph, and then I wanted to dip a little bit and know that a cloud just went over the solar panels. My wildest dreams is to have 100 locations in Ypsilanti, all on Solar Ipsy, all being tracked in real time. And Ypsilanti would be the place to come for solar information. When I started, I was searching, and, and I was looking in 10 or 12 different places. And so now we have a website where information's already been collated, and so somebody can search on solar, find this site, and hopefully have all the information they need. It's just amazing that you see people in far off remote villages in like Mongolia, you know, if they're looking for solar power or for some information, it's there for them to find. It's happened, you know, it's, it's so cool.